All right, welcome back, guys. This is Ivan from BrainyBiz.com, and we're back from vacation. We've been away for a while, and we actually moved the setup. We have a new warehouse, and we moved the, um, the place where we do uh, the tutorial videos. So I hope you guys like the new setup. We're going to have different camera angles and stuff like that, try to make the tutorials more interesting for you guys. So in this first tutorial, the first thing we're going to do, we're actually going to use this very popular and cheap a uh, little motor, the uh, 28BYJ-48. It's a five volt uh, stepper motor. And it comes with its own uh, little control board here. Uh, these are very popular. They're not the best, they're not the, the fastest, or they don't have a lot of torque, but they're great for beginners to actually uh, learn how to control a stepper motor using uh, Uno like this. And the other part we're gonna use is this very simple that we used before, the rotary encoder. And it turns all the way around, one way or the other, and there's even a switch when you click on it. So this is going to be our first start with this tutorial. So as you can see, the setup is fairly simple. We have the motor connected to the Uno here. We also have the rotary encoder connected, and we're using a breadboard power supply right here to give power to the motor, because sometimes these guys can uh, request more power than the Uno is, uh, can provide. And we're powering the Uno using our little batteries here that uh, we used in other tutorials also. So we're going to keep it pretty simple today. The way we're going to code it is that as I move the rotary encoder around, the motor, and I'm going to put a little gear here so we can see the movement a little bit better. As I move it this way, the gear is going to move this way, the other way, and when I press the button, it's going to go back to its origin. So basically I'm turning, this gear is turning, and if I press, it should go back. And the thing to remember with the rotary encoder is that they can skip steps sometimes. So we have to take that into account in our code, and we're going to code for that to make this little motor as precise as we can. So that's the way we're going to start this uh, tutorial. So fairly simple at the beginning, and then we're going to do different motors and add buttons and stuff like that. So let's start with this first phase. So we're going to cut here, go see the uh, code window, get some explanation on that, and then we'll come back and see the results. So let's go take a look. All right, guys, so here we are in the code. Uh, we're going to start at the top. Uh, we're going to include the stepper library. Uh, that library is included when you install the Arduino IDE software, so you shouldn't have to download that. You should already have it. And then we're declaring a variable called steps, and we're setting it to 32. Uh, these motors, like we talked about before, the number of steps to do one revolution of the internal shaft that's inside the motor, it's 32. And it's geared to the external shaft, and that one would need... 2048 steps for one revolution of the external shaft where you would connect your gears. Then we're declaring two volatile boolean uh, variable, turn detected and rotation direction. These are going to be used in interrupt to uh, detect when we actually move the rotary encoder. Uh, the rotation direction is to know if we're going clockwise or counterclockwise. And here are the pins that the encoder is connected to, so 2, 3, and 4. And then we have rotary position, we're putting it to 0 at the beginning, and that's to store the stepper motor position. Then we have previous position, when we do our loop, we're going to save the previous position into this variable, and then compare it to the new position, to make sure we didn't skip a step ahead, and only move the motor one step. So that way we can check to make sure that our position will always be pretty accurate. And then this is the setup for the motor. So stepper, small stepper, steps, which we declared at the top. And this is the sequence of the pin. So the sequence is in one, one, so that's on pin eight, in two is on pin nine, in three is on pin 10, as you see in the diagram here, and in 4 is 11. And here's our interrupt that will run when we move the rotary encoder. So the little delay here of 4 is for debouncing. 4 works pretty good. You could experiment, move it up or down. I find that 4 is not too bad. So you could experiment with that. 
And depending on the digital read of the clock pin, it will, will store the rotation direction of uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on which way we turn it. And then we move into our main setup. And pin mode, uh, the clock is an input, the DT is input also, the switch on the encoder is input. And we're writing to the switch high because we want to pull up resistor for the switch. And then we attach interrupt zero. Interrupt zero is always connected to pin two on the Arduino Uno. So if you check the schematic, you'll find that um, pin two is connected to the encoder. And then we have, so basically when we move the encoder, it's gonna call up interrupt zero and it's gonna run this ISR that we defined right here. And then the main loop, it's not too long. So the set speed, 600. Maximum for these motors seems to be 700. I, I use 6 just to make sure because if you put it too high the motor won't move at all. Now first thing we're, we're checking in our loop, we're checking if the switch on the encoder has been pressed. If it has been pressed then we check if the rotary position is already equal to 0. If it's already equal to 0 we don't want to move the motor, it's already at the right spot because we're using the encoder switch to actually move the motor back to its starting position in this code. In the future codes that we're going to use in this tutorial, uh, we're going to change that around a little bit. Now, if it's not equal to zero, then else, then we're going to move the step. We're going to move the stepper minus the rotary position times 50. And that 50, you're going to see down here exactly uh, what it means. So we'll come back to this portion here after we check the rest of the code. Now here, this only runs if rotation is detected. So if turn detected, and that's because in our little um, interrupt here, when the interrupt gets called, turn detected is equal to true. So as you move down, if turn detected, meaning is it true, yes, then we're gonna run all this code here. So if turn has been detected, first thing we're doing, we're assigning previous position is equal to the rotary position. So let's say we have a rotary position of 24. Well then previous position will be equal to 24. If rotation direction is true, meaning it's going clockwise, then rotary position is equal to rotary position minus one. So we're de decreasing that by one. Else it's plus one. Clockwise, counterclockwise. Now after that, once we've done this portion, we're putting turn detected to false, so we do not repeat until we detect another rotation. And this part here is actually what moves the motor after we've set the rotary position. So remember, we set previous position to the old rotary position. So let's say the rotary position, like I said, was 24. So previous position is equal to 24, but we're doing a minus one or a plus one since we detected a new turn. So if previous position, 24 plus 1, equal 25, is equal to rotary position, which is now 25, then we move the motor clockwise. Step to take, 50, and small stepper, we're moving the motor 50 steps. If the rotary position plus 1, the rotary position is 25 now, is equal to the previous position, 26, that means that the motor went counterclockwise. So we're stepping minus 50 and we're moving the motor. So that's where if we go back here and we click the switch and it's not equal to zero, meaning the motor has moved some, some place. And let's say the rotary position at that point is 100. So we're moving the stepper minus 100 times 50. So that's 5,000 minus 1, uh, 5,000. Now, if the rotary position was minus 100, then minus minus 100 is 100, so we're putting the negative into positive, so at that point we're moving 5,000 steps to get back to zero. So there you go, that's, uh, that's the code that we're going to use today to actually uh, move the motor with the rotary encoder, and uh, we're going to compile this, and we're going to upload to the Uno, and let's go back and check out the results. 
All right, so welcome back. So everything is plugged in. We uploaded the code to the Uno that we were looking at. I'm providing power to the motor using the little breadboard power supply here. And I'm using batteries to provide power to the Uno. So now everything is ready to go. So I'm gonna pick up the encoder and start spinning it one way. And there we go, the other way. And that seems to work. So if you take into account where it is now, the way the lines are, so I'm gonna start spinning As you can see, sometimes it skips, but the code is keeping track of it, so it should come back to the origin. And there we go, that's about a full rotation, so I'm going to click. And it's doing the amount of steps that we moved. So it should stop about there. And there you go. So the other way, same thing. And there you go. It seems to work pretty good. So as you can tell, if I do one, one step, and there you go, you see? In the code, we have, I think, 50. So that's the amount that one steps move. Now, you could increase or decrease that to have uh, finer motion or faster, but these motors are not fast. So if you increase the number of steps, it's gonna take, it's gonna take the time it takes to actually make the steps. So you could, like this, as you say, I'm turning really fast, but it's not following because it doesn't have the time to actually do the step as fast as I'm turning. But the code is keeping track of where the wheel is. So when we click, it goes back. And about there, and there you go. So it's pretty precise like that. So not too bad. All right, so there you go, guys. This is a great way to uh, start. Like I, uh, like I always say, these motors are fairly cheap. Um, I mean, like I said, they're not the fastest. They're, they don't have a lot of torque and stuff like that, but it's a good way to start. Uh, experimenting with uh, stepper motors. Uh, now, like I said at the beginning, this is going to be a multi-part tutorial. Uh, we're still going to be using the rotary encoder throughout the tutorial, but uh, we're going to change the motor to a NEMA 17 size motor. And uh, the code is going to be changing a little bit because we're going to be using the uh, easy driver motor driver board to control the NEMA 17. And as the uh, tutorial moves along, uh, we're going to add parts like buttons, a buzzer and stuff like that. The buttons are going to be used to set in points and then out points and then we'll be able to travel between those set points and reset them and you know we'll play we'll play around with that. Also um, go to our site brainybits.com you'll find the tutorial page and you can uh, get the schematics to see how everything is connected and download the code and also we sell all these parts inside of our store. So, like, uh, like I said at the beginning, we're glad to be back. Sorry, guys, we were gone for a while, but we were, some people were on vacation, and we moved the actual office and the warehouse. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this uh, tutorial. And uh, we should, uh, should be making tutorial more frequently now. Uh, so I hope you guys stick around with us. So until next time, my name is Ivan, and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.